first of all thank for kind introduction the permission of the chair i would like to start my presentation so this topic what we are going to uh, you know see in next 3 4 uh, uh, presentations is not often been tackled up so uh, the depression and uh, and diabetes which is um, they are, they, are, they move hand in hand but as a physician as a clinician probably we don't give so much important to the uh, psychosocial aspects of our patients we only you know uh, concentrated more on the clinics and uh, more on medication or pharmacological uh, therapy so uh, the topic uh, for me is diabetes euthymia and an overlooked target in diabetes management so we all know about this term uh, diabetes we all know but what is euth what is euthymia what the term uh, euthymia means is in greek word eu is being well and thymo is soul or emotion that means having a good soul or having good emotion is what euthymia means in psychiatry and uh, psychology euthymia is a normal tranquil mental state or mood so diabetes and mood disorder uh, if we look at the epidemiology uh, we can see that people with diabetes are two to three times more likely to have depression uh, and mainly depressive disorders than people without diabetes major depressive disorders also call clinical depression occur in 10% of people with type 2 diabetes which is double the rate of general population only 25 to 50% of people with diabetes have depression gets actually diagnosed and treatment being given uh, on your right hand side there is a epidemiological um, uh, 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 representation in graphical form where uh, we see that bangladesh has reported maximum number of depression amounting to 30% among type 2 diabetic patients in india uh, it was 2% uh, that was probably because uh, the diagnosis of clinical depression is not very often limit so continuing the prevalence in india although the limited research is available on this relationship in india a recent population based study has shown that urban india found 20% of people with newly diagnosed uh diabetes had co occurring uh, depression so 2% amongst all the type 2 diabetic patients but newly diagnosed patients have uh, almost 20% of uh, depression along with uh, their uh, medical condition and we all know that diabetes comes with uh, the terms like the patient will have talk first then denial then patient uh, will will go into acceptance and then compliance so this shock denial uh, acceptance and compliance throughout all these phases there is a subclinical depression which goes and uh, we as clinicians many a times we fail to diagnose the condition this is a vicious cycle of course depression anxiety and uh, hyperglycemia uh, in our patients uh, the factors like depression anxiety negative feeling uh, about weight shape and body leads to high blood sugar levels Uh, more anxiety more stress hormone in body and uh, decreased diabetes self care and strategic insulin restriction is what uh, comes later depression and diabetes both are interrelated uh, we know inflammation uh, is is a cause for uh, for hyperglycemia so we have inflammation underlying activated hpa axis is there non adherence uh, hypocampal injury psychosocial stress and insulin all those factors amalgamation of all those factors together will lead to hyperglycemia and less self care uh, in patients uh, with type 2 diabetes and with depression so these are a couple of more factors which uh, contributes to depression in diabetes and uh, which leads to suboptimal uh, glycemic control uh, we have uh, higher hb1c in patient which will lead to depression they will they will have the feeling of failure then uh, the history is very important patient who has history of depression uh, in past have two times higher chances of getting depressed when they are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes female gender has higher uh, chances of having um, uh, having depressive disorder uh, when they are diagnosed with diabetes lower income countries they reported more amount of uh, depression along with diabetes and then high bmi and diet are again factors which contribute so impact of high blood sugar on mood uh, many a times when patient tells us uh, they, they will do 
is saying in their words like tension, which is actually anxiety and disorder, uh, which which leads to hedonic tone and uh, energetic um, arousal. So all those factors will lead to hy hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, increased UC ICU mortality, cognitive impairment, reduced quality of life, and negative mood. So what are the outcomes of diabetes mellitus and comorbid depression? Uh, these are from different studies. And um, when we look at those studies, uh, uh, we find that greater risk of heart diseases are found in patients who are, who are depressed uh, with type 2 diabetes. Higher body mass index also is an indicator of, uh, uh, of comorbid depression. Hyperglycemia, worse diabetes self-care reflected by worse adherence to diet and exercise advice and there is increased mortality risk as well. Comorbid depression worsens clinical outcome in type 2 diabetes. Possible explanations are lower level of physical fitness and reduced medical adherence. And diabetes di distress uh, itself includes despondency and emotional turmoil, specifically related to caring for diabetes, the need for monitoring and treatment, preoccupation with complications and, and the effects on various relationships. Uh, it is related to poorer diabetic outcome, uh, as we have mentioned. So there are two aspects. One is diabetes distress, and the other aspect is major depressive disorder. So how to diagnose whether a patient has diabetes distress syndrome or uh, he or she actually has major uh, depressive disorder? So there are some scales and there are some tools which would help us to diagnose the condition and then treat appropriately. So these formats are self-report using rating scores for one, from 1 to 6 based on feeling and experiences over the last past week. This is for diabetes distress where they will have a marking from 1 to 6 as per score. And in major dis uh, depressive disorders, we have different scales. Uh, that too has those uh, you know, uh, marking and scaling from 0 to 3. So different tools are available and these tools are available in, uh, in uh, websites online. So we can download probably in our day-to-day -day practice while the patient is waiting for their reports to be ready. Those times we can uh, hand over the leaflets to patient to, to, to get their um, you know, depression uh, to be scaled and, uh, and eventually treat them. Uh, there are other aspects which is related to diabetes distress syndrome, which is a belief uh, that uh, that uh, believe that underlying psychosocial insulin resistance. So patient feels that if they're being offered insulin, that means they have failed on their disease. So perception of worsening illness severity with the addition of insulin. Requirement for insulin represents a personal failure to manage the illness. The need for insulin is perceived as losing control over diabetes. Apprehensions and anticipation of pain, discomfort regarding the injection of insulin, and lack of personal benefit for the ad, uh, added stress and effort of using insulin. So insulin becomes a big stigma in a type 2 diabetic patient's life. Uh, we know there are a lot of social stigmas associated with insulin. And uh, if you specifically ask the patient uh, why you are refusing in, uh, taking insulin, so you would have all those factors that we have mentioned just now. There are, again, um, it is also, um, there are other factors like fear of hypoglycemia. The patient would uh, have uh, some stories from their, um, their, their colleagues or their friends who experienced hypoglycemia in, uh, in, during the insu insulin uh, process. And then uh, with, with that hypoglycemia stories, they will have fear of hypoglycemia beforehand uh, when uh, we talk about insulin. So how to screen for depressive and anxious symptoms uh, is very important in type 2 diabetic patients. The purpose is uh, one, diabetes specific. Uh, for this, we have uh, screening tools like PAID scale, diabetic distress scale. For assessing quality of life, we have WHO guidelines, a tool, a questionnaire, which would tell us how is the quality of life of the patient. And for depression and anxiety, we have scales like HADS and PHQ-9 and BDI. So these are very simple tools to diagnose depression in our patients and uh, probably if required, we can refer them to some uh, psychotherapist or required to psychiatrist. Let us look at the treatment options we have. We have cognit uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. Other types of psychotherapies are there and antidepressant medications. 
while choosing uh, antidepressant medications, these points we have to consider. Uh, antidepressant should have no influence on body weight because we know higher the BMI and this concept of HB, uh, HB uh, AKG, that means if while uh, reducing one person HB and see if the patient gains three kg body weight, the benefits are nullified. So that should be avoided in patient. No interaction with the numerous medications that the patient is likely on. It should not produce hepatotoxicity, should not produce cardiovascular or blood pressure effects. Minimal sedation should be there and minimal or no sexual dysfunction with the antidepressant therapy. So current recommendations for tackling diabetes related mood disorders is primarily counseling and then if required, if the patient is diagnosed with psychiatric disorders, then probably we should refer the patient to a psychiatric uh, practitioner. The following groups of people with diabetes should be referred to specialized mental health care. So uh, if somebody has significant distress, persistent fear of, of hypoglycemia, psychological insulin resistance and psychiatric disorders like severe depression, anxiety and eating disorders, these patients should be referred uh, by a diabetologist to a specialist uh, psychiatrist. And collaborative care should be there with, uh, from professionals. Uh, to tackle this symptom and, and underlying condition. The, the psychosocial intervention should be integrated into diabetes care plan. So very important point, we, uh, we talk very sel seldom about depression and diabetes, but we practice never. So uh, this is time probably beyond glycemic control. We should also think about the mental health of the patient so that we can give them a better quality of life. Only glycemic control would uh, not prevent the patient, uh, patient deterioration mentally. So health is considered to be physical health, mental health, and sexual well-being. So we should give more importance to mental health each time. So motivational interventions, stress management strategies, coping skill trainings, family therapy, case managements, these are the uh, modalities by which probably we can help our patients to uh, to get away from depressive disorders. And if required, we should uh, also intervene with cognitive behavioral therapy by professionals. So thank you so much for your patient hearing. Uh, my take home message would be, uh, rather than only concentrating on pharmacological therapy, probably we should also have some interventions in patients' life to improve their mental health. Thank you so much. Ma